The other major instrument in smaller businesses tends to be either factoring or invoice finance or invoice discounting. Now factoring and invoice discounting are slightly different, but what they are fundamentally is they're funding against the sales ledger. So if a company makes a number of sales, the debtors, i.e. the money that's owed to those companies, sits as security for the lender. And the lender will lend according to the amount of debtors that are in, in circulation. Normally it's somewhere around 70%. So if you sell a million pounds worth of product, you might find that you can borrow up to 700,000 pounds. That works very effectively if a business is growing because if you sell £2 million the next month, obviously you can draw down a facility of £1.4 million. However, the reverse of that is that if turnover starts to decline, of course the amount of lending in place starts to reduce. And that's why it's very attractive for funders because it manages their risk because they are always only lending a fixed percentage against the amount that's of, of sales that are, that are out. So in the event that the debtors start to decline, the bank should be in a position, or the lender should be in a position where it can recover its debts. Um, typically, invoice financing will charge a fee for the, uh, uh, for the rate of interest, which might be somewhere like 3% over base at the moment. And in addition to that, they'll take an arrangement fee and they'll also take a fee against the amount of sales that the company generates. And that might be something like half a percent of sales per annum. Again, it's a very competitive market, shop around, but what, company, what funders are looking for is viability. So they're needing to see a, a properly prepared business plan, they need to isolate where their risk is and see whether they can recover their debts. One point I'd make about that debt instrument is that usually any sort of contractual business will struggle to raise invoice discounting or factoring because the nature of their debts means that nobody can actually call them in in the event that the business goes, goes bust. And I suppose the, the other debt instrument is, is mezzanine finance, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And, and it's something that's just come back into play because, again, the government has come back with its capital for enterprise funding, which uh, they've put £75 million into the UK economy, being managed by two institutions. One is Maven Capital for the North, for the North and then in the South it's Octopus Capital. And this is a fund where they will um, effectively lend for up to two million pounds, between 200,000 pounds and two million pounds into what they see as cash generative profitable businesses and they'll lend typically on something like a five year term. Now the, the beauty of mezzanine finance for a company is you're not surrendering a share ownership in the business, so it is sitting as debt, uh, however it's very expensive. And to give you some indication, you might find that you'd be charged something like a rate of interest of 10%, and then you may find that there's another 10% as a redemption premium. In other words, it's costing you about 20% a year, but it's very good finance. It's, it's very useful and it can, it can fit into a marketplace where there isn't too much funding available. And it's seen as quite high risk finance, but it's, you're not surrendering your own equity during that that sort of funding. You just touched there on, on surrendering equity. Can you tell me a little bit about the, the equity markets? Yes, yeah, I suppose there, there are probably three areas to look at. One is the, the smaller company's flotation market, which is plus and aim. Uh, the second is the private equity market, and third is business angels. And then if we talk about business angels first, the Northwest is blessed with some active business angels groups, and there is a national organisation called the BBAA, the British Business Angels Association. In the Northwest, I think we have Northwest Business Angels, and these are lively groups where they have high net worth individuals that are prepared to invest into smaller companies where they can see a very good return. There are pros and cons to doing that. As, as a company, as an investee, what you're doing is you're bringing in a third party, you're bringing in their views, and they're going to want to have certain restrictions and rights over, over the way the company is run. Uh, having said that, what you might actually bring on board is a very experienced, seasoned individual that's made money themselves that can help you. And fundamentally, they can bring capital that's not going to starve your cash flow, but actually enhance it and help you to get to, new, to where you want to be. I think the significant thing there is that by surrendering a proportion of your equity, you have to be confident that your business is going to grow to reflect that. Because if you have, say, 50% of a company now, having sh uh, given half of it away, is that business going to double in size or more? In which case, maybe it's worth bringing in the, the private equity. So the business angels, I suppose the downside 
is that sometimes you are dealing with an individual, you're taking a wealthy individual that decides they're going to have a punt into your business. What I would implore people to do is, if they're looking to raise uh, business angel finance, start by looking at people you know. Know people that know your own credibility, your own track record. Try and understand whether you've got people in the industry that understand the sector, because if they can come on board, they can probably add a lot of value to your business. But, um, but fundamentally, don't rule it out. See it as a positive, and again, shop around, talk to a number of people, make sure that you have a very viable business plan that you can sell to those people, because they're going to be pretty impatient, they're going to be pretty rigorous in the way they do things, and they're going to want to see that if they invest into a business, they're taking a big risk, a big risk, and they want to make sure that they can get a good return on that. So how does that link then to private equity? Manchester's the second city in the, in the UK for private equity. We're blessed with a, a range of private equity houses from investing into very, very small businesses and early stage and start-up businesses to doing some pretty sizeable deals. And I would say that when you're into the realms of raising private equity, you need to appoint an advisor. You need a proper experienced corporate finance advisor. Now, the way the private equity market tends to work is they are very, very rigorous in their returns. They're seeking something like a 30% internal rate of return on any investment. They want to see a business that can generate cash, they want to see a business that can grow and that's got a viable strategy. But where does it all start? It starts with the quality of the management. And if the management aren't good enough, then very quickly the private equity house will move away. It's a long process, it can take months to raise private equity, even with a good, invest, uh, even with a good advisor and when you've got a good viable business. But uh, it can be a fantastic way of generating wealth and for growth for the business. And it works very simply as follows. If you can't raise the money, the debt to buy, let's say, to effect a management buyout for five million pounds, you bring in a private equity house for two million pounds. They take half the business. You grow that business that you've bought for five million pounds and you sell it for 30 million pounds. They get half back, you get half. Ergo, there's 15 million pounds for the management team. Now that's very simplistic, but you have to remember if it works for the private equity house, it's gonna work superbly well for the management team of the investee company as well. Well, of course, these are, these are private companies. What about the listed companies? Well, in, in the UK, there are two, two listings for smaller businesses. The first is the plus market, which is, is fairly recent, and it's spun out of something called OFEX. Um, and the second is the alternative investment market, or AIM. Mm. Now, I think the observations I would make is those markets have been pretty quiet over the last couple of years as we've gone through our turmoil. Uh, however, they will start to reenact. They will become busier. Anyone that's seeking to go onto those markets, I think I'd probably make about three points. The first is be aware it's very expensive and there's a lot of costs involved. You should, the second is that you should use a good advisor and the good advisor should be able to actually uh, work you through that process and tell you very quickly whether or not your business is viable for it. And, and, and linked into that is the fact that I think you should view those markets as being the start process rather than the end process. So in other words, don't see it as an exit by floating. See a flotation as a way of starting the business and starting on a growth pattern. Because once again, investors, if they're buying shares, they're looking at what the growth story is and that's where their return is and that's what's going to attract them to the market. But um, they have a use. What I would say also is that the smaller markets do tend to suffer from illiquidity. In other words, the sale of shares isn't necessarily that easy and there can be a problem actually trading. So if, it's, if you have a business that you think is going to grow very quickly and it's viable, speak to some proper nominated advisors. We're blessed with some very good advisors in Manchester. Speak to your, your nominated advisors and they should be able to talk you through the process and don't discount flotation if your business is in that marketplace. Okay, thank you very much, Stephen. Very, uh, very enlightening. So if different businesses have different requirements, what's the best way of identifying funding options when no two businesses are the same? Here's our panel of experts.